most of you are familiar with the furor which was caused by the failure of the fish trap at Oxbow Dam site. This will give you a little better idea of what happened. Let's take a look at a map of the area showing the Oxbow section of the Snake River flowing around a two mile section, almost doubling back on itself, and then continuing on north until it comes to the Columbia River. To build this uh, dam down here, the copper dam was put across the Snake River and the flow diverted through a 1,500 foot tunnel and back into its original course. To collect fish which were coming upstream, a fish trap was put at the lower end of the tunnel and the fish collected and put into trucks for the 15 mile trip above Brownlee Dam. In September of this year, it was discovered that the fish trap at the lower end of the tunnel had developed serious cracks and was in danger of falling into the river. Uh, temporary repairs being of no avail, it was discovered that they were going to have to do an extensive repair. So the copper dam at the upper end of the oxbow section was broken the river flowed back around its original course and a coffer dam was put at the lower end of the tunnel and at the upper end of the tunnel in order to dewater the area to make the repairs possible. The fish then coming up the river found the Snake River running back around its original course and followed this course up into the area just below the broken coffer dam where they were prevented from migrating any farther upwards by a swift flow of water coming over the break in the coffer dam. In order to collect fish which came into the area, a temporary fish trap was put on the Oregon shore and a dip net operation was instituted on the Idaho shore just below the broken coffer dam. Fish were trapped in the temporary trap by making them migrate into this from a flow of water which was taken from the area just above the coffer dam. The fish were then put into the trucks just as they were down in the lower section and they were then taken above Brownlee Dam and released into the forebay for their trip on upstream. We have a film to show you which was taken on October 6th, 7th, and 8th of this year and this will give you a better idea of what happened. The shot you see here is the fish trap at the lower end of the diversion tunnel. You see the entrance that the fish used in the lower left-hand corner of the picture. The framework is the... Now this is another shot of the fish trap. The broken coffer dam the river flowing over, and just to the left of the flow is the Oregon Shore Trap, temporary fish trap. And here is the flow that the fish coming around the oxbow section met when they got up to the upper section. Temporary fish measures were taken to load these fish into tank trucks for the trip above Brownlee Dam. This is during the first part of the operation the fish were dip netted very much like they had been at Celilo. They were put into plastic sacks and taken over to the Oregon shore where they were loaded into trucks for their trip above Brownlee. Here is a fish that has been dip netted from the river and is going to be taken over to a truck to be moved above Brownlee Dam. Here are fish jumping at the flow which is coming over the broken coffer dam. These men are dip netting salmon from this flow coming over the coffer dam there's an immense school of fish down there that had come around the 
oxbow section of the river and were dead-ended here, they collected in tremendous numbers during the peak of the fall run. You see the fish being put into the flow where they were taken down and towed over by an outboard to the Oregon shore where they were put into trucks. Here is the, the flow coming over the break in the coffer dam, very turbulent. And in the upper left-hand corner is the temporary fish trap on the Oregon shore. This shows the trap with the river flowing by, the men counting fish. Here's the entrance to the trap the fish move into a hopper device being fed by water from a pipe. And the fish move into this hopper. Here goes one now. And he is recorded by the counter. Later on, the Idaho shore operations were improved when a pipe was put into the river with a flow coming down with a funnel going into the pipe midway down where the dip, dip net operations were taking place. Here's a fish going into the funnel, and there he's going into the pipe for a trip another 100 yards downstream where he is put into a fish hopper. Now this hopper was taken across the river by a high line. At the Oregon shore, they were put into trucks for their trip above Brownlee Dam. There's a steelhead going into the pipe, 100 yards downstream, into the hopper, then across the river by this high line to the truck. And fish here were recorded as they were put into the hopper. When a load of fish was collected from the Idaho side, the hopper was taken across the river, and here you see the fish being loaded into the tank trucks, which then took them above Brownlee Dam for their migration on upstream. This is the fish trap. There's the being taken from the fish trap with its load of fish and being put over and onto a truck. These trucks are specially constructed with aeration equipment to keep the fish in good shape on their trip. Here's one moving out and another truck ready for another load. Above Brownlee Dam, another 15 miles upstream from the Oxbow Dam site, the trucks were backed into the water and the fish were then released to continue their migration upstream. Here's the truck back clear into the water and the fish were released, and then they continued their migration on upstream to their spawning grounds. At the lower end of the tunnel, the fish trap was then repaired. The copper dams at the lower end were taken out, and the fish trap was then ready to start fishing again after having been repaired. The copper dam at the upper end of the tunnel was taken out then, and the water decreased its flow over the breach in the copper dam and started flowing back through the tunnel again. Here is the water coming out of the lower end of the tunnel right next to the fish trap. The fish trap on the left and the main course of the Snake River. And here is the water flowing through the tunnel, the, the section of the Snake River below the Copper Dam almost dried up. Here are some of the pools which were below the break in the Copper Dam which began drying up when the water started flowing through the tunnel. Here are fish trying to get up into these small pools as the water receded. Here you see the water had entirely stopped flowing. 
Many thousands of scrap fish were killed in the earlier parts of the operation. Here are some of the salmon, which were caught with no water and were butchered then for transportation to schools and sta other state institutions. Numerous small potholes were found below the breach in the cofferdam and makeshift operations were undertaken to get the fish back into the flowing river. The flow you see there is still coming over the break in the cofferdam and most of the river going through the diversion tunnel. On one of the big pools below the break in the cofferdam, there were thousands of fish. As the river decreased in flow, these fish still kept on jumping at the water which was cascading down into the pool. Here you see them jumping at the water flowing into the pool. Several methods were tried to chase these fish back into the river so that they would go down around the oxbow section of the river and be taken by the fish trap when it was again put in operation. However, when they got this far up in the river, they apparently didn't know what the word quit meant, so they kept on jumping at the flow which was coming into this big pool. Here you see them jumping at the banks, trying to swim up this small flow of water. These men are trying to keep the fish from swimming up into this little trickle of water which was still coming over the breach in the cofferdam. This man was throwing rocks in to keep the fish from swimming up. More scrap fish and caught without water and died by the thousands. Later on in the afternoon in the big pool, the water cut off entirely. Here the, you see the flow has stopped completely, and the fish and the scrap fish, the salmon and steelhead in this big pool were using up the oxygen in the water and were seen to be in distress on the surface and were dying on the edges of the pool. Attempts were made to get oxygen into the water. There is a man spraying water into the pool to try to get some oxygen to these fish, becoming very short of oxygen, and many dying on the banks. Attempts were made to get water into the pool by placing pumps in the water above the cofferdam and pumping the water over at the break in the cofferdam and into this pool below. Here is a crane which was used later on in salvage operations and a raft in the pool which was used in dip netting fish and there is a hopper they were put into. However, at this time it was felt that the fish were not in good enough shape to move. Here's a salmon swimming into the seepage which was coming through the coffer dam. And there were quite a few hundred in this area which were later taken out and moved above Brownlee. Here are the pumps which were put into the flow of, of water coming past the upper end of the coffer dam. However, as soon as they would get one end, the intake would be left high and dry and uh, there wasn't any uh, water left to get into the big pool. Later on, these pipes were drilled and supplied with compressed air. They were dropped into the big pool, and immediately after the inception of these devices, it was noted that the fish were very much benefited by the extra oxygen. However, it was too late to help some of the fish, and salvage operations were instituted to take care of butchering and moving to 
the schools and state institutions. Here are some of the personnel which were present at the project to oversee the operations. In the meantime, the fish salvage operations continued, the fish being cleaned by Idaho Power Company and Morris and Knudsen Construction Company personnel, with more work piled up on the bank. Later on, salvage operations continued. The fish were dip netted and put into a hopper. They were then taken up and put onto a tank truck, just as the other fish had been earlier. Here you see the fish being loaded into the tank truck. And they were then moved above Brownlee Dam, as you saw earlier in the picture. Still in the pool, there were thousands of salmon which had died. They were still being salvaged. They were put into these boxes, supplied with ice. Here are some of the fish which were taken to state institutions. Below the coffer dam, the seepage was coming through, and a temporary trap was put into the river, and an additional 400 salmon were taken out here. Here's the water flowing through the lower end of the tunnel past the repaired fish trap, and this is how when we left it. <laughs>